There's one really cool thing in the new realistic assault rifle template update that I haven't really talked about. And it's this really modular attachment system that we built, which I think is really interesting for people that might not even care about the update. So I just wanted to talk about it in a quick video. Here's what it is. The core idea behind the attachment system in the asset is that you have pieces, all of which are data assets. Let me show you. If we go to the Infima Games folder here, Realistic Assault Rifle Template, Demo, Data, and we just kind of scrub through these. I'm just going to make them a list so we can look through them a little easier. You can see that inside here, we're going to see pieces for each part of the assault rifle. So we have an iron sight, we have a laser, a magazine, we have different kind of muzzles, scope. Right, so what are these and where do these go? That's what I'm going to talk about. Hold up. Inside of each gun in the project, the idea is that there is an attachment manager component. This is how this attachment system works. And in the attachment manager, there are two very important points that I want you to keep in mind if you're going to build something similar. There's an attachments array. Well, it's actually a map. And then there's a current attachment datas map. These two control pretty much everything. So check this out. Attachments contains a certain kind of data assets, which in this case just end in plural. And then <laughs> current attachment datas are going to be the selected attachments that we're going to equip on the gun. Here's a simpler explanation. Attachments contains every single attachment that this gun can have. That's what this is. And so you're mapping every single slot to every single attachment that the gun can have. In fact, if we look at one of these data assets, so for example, for the magazine, we look at the magazine's data asset, and we open this options, you can see that it's only really linking to two other data assets, which you could find in this other map, which is called current attachment data, that is the equipped attachments. So it's really just saying, hey, these are the attachments that you could equip. And the other map is saying, hey, this this is the set of attachments that you have equipped. So again, we're mapping the slot of the attachment to the attachment and then the slot of the attachment to all the attachments that you have equipped. The entire point of this one up here is simply so we can randomize attachments at runtime. You could actually just not have this if you didn't need the gun itself to know what attachments it can have if you're always going to tell it or pass it the attachments. Here's how fast this system is. And I haven't really shown you exactly what's inside of an attachment, but let me show you what swapping looks like. So we can swap this magazine transparent for a magazine default, and it's going to swap immediately. All of these are actors. So for example, if I want to swap this four stock, I can immediately just, just like this, just swap it. So four stock extended, I can swap that for four stock default. And as you can see, every other attachment adjusts to match that four stock. That's what's interesting about this setup. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about how those attachments match that four stock because it's not a system that's specifically made for the four stock. So if we look inside of one of these data assets, let's say that I just open, for example, one of my favorite ones here, the silencer, right? So this is a muzzle. You're going to see at the top right that it says weapon muzzle data. We're not going to get exactly into what that means. We're only going to look at the data that every single attachment data file here, the data asset has. These are just primary data assets. You probably know what that is. If you don't know, that's fine. You can just look it up. It has a name, an attached socket. This is just going to be the socket on the gun that it's going to attach to. There's an attached type. This is actually the same kind of attachment type that you saw on the gun before. And it's really just going to tell it, hey, what attachment are we going to attach this attachment to? And that sounds very weird, but it's going to be very visual here. So the silencer is actually attached to the four stock. There's a socket on the four stock that the silencer is attached to. And the reason for that is because you can change the four stock. And so you want that to go with it. So you don't have to assign a bunch of locations for each four stock because that's just tedious. And then obviously you have a blueprint class, which is really just the actual class of the attachment and a texture, which we just use for gameplay. The class itself is a pretty boring, just normal mesh. Uh, in this case, we have a flash too. That this 
really has nothing to do with the attachment system itself, but I wanted to show the, the, the fact that it's a pretty simple class. And that's kind of the magic of this attachment system. I don't know if I managed to convey it properly, but it's really magical because you can compose, and I talked about composition in another video, I don't know if I've uploaded it yet, but you can compose any weapon out of any kind of attachments. It's really modular. There's no pre-defined attachment set. So this weapon could have a four stock, or it could have a barrel, or it could have whatever else you add as an attachment type. And it could just not have a laser attachment. It could not have iron sights. It could not have scopes. You can define what it has. And then the system is just going to adapt to that. And so, yeah, but this is like a, I think it was like a really interesting system that um, took quite a while to come up with. And I think, I think it's, uh, I think we kind of nailed it with this one. So, you know, just wanted to show it and give you a little bit of a glimpse of what we're cooking in the in the new realistic assault rifle template update but just generally also if you want to or if you're working on a first person shooter project then this is just helpful generally um if you want to just check out the realistic assault rifle template in the description if you need kind of modular approaches like this we try to make things as modular as possible and as good looking as you can see so there's that I'll leave that link in the description. Otherwise, then I'll see you in the next video. Peace.